All right, question number three is more of an interpretation question, and it's going to in part help us think about integrals and dimensionality in some ways that will prove useful later on in the chapter, uh, particularly when we get into triple integrals. Okay, so part A says, let I be the interval from A to B, and explain why the length of the interval is given by this integral from A to B of just dx. Okay. So I think a, a pretty standard Calc 2 kind of response to this would be, well, just think of the integrand, the thing you're integrating, as the constant function 1. Okay, and so then this picture would come to mind. And you're saying, well, I'm just going to find the area bounded by this horizontal line in the x-axis over the interval from A to B. So in other words, this integral would just be the area of this rectangle. And that is just... Uh, the height, which is 1, times the width, which is b minus a. And so there you go. The integral here is just b minus a, which is the length of the interval. And while this is perfectly fine, um, there is a bit of a, a discrepancy in terms of units. So if, if y and x, uh, say, had the same units, maybe, maybe they're both in inches, then this area really would have units of square inches. And so while numerically it would equal the length of the interval, the, the units would be a little bit off, okay? But nonetheless, this is a, a perfectly valid uh, interpretation. So a slightly different way to think about this is just to go down a dimension, think only in terms of length. So now think about partitioning this interval from A to B into a bunch of these small little subintervals whose width are uh, just these differential lengths dx. So if I start at a, so when I start walking forward, taking these little baby steps of size dx, and I do that until I get to the point b, and then ask, well, how far did I travel? Well, you would just travel b minus a units, right? That's that's really what this notation is telling you to do, just some differential lengths. Okay, so this interpretation is nice in that you're just really working only with length, and so this really is a, a one-dimensional kind of statement. All right, so now for part B, this has to do with double integrals. It says, explain why the double integral of just dA over a region R is equal to the area of that region. And R here doesn't necessarily have to be a, a rectangle. Okay, so we've been talking about double integrals now in terms of volume. Okay, so one interpretation here, which is directly analogous to our first interpretation up here in part A, is to say, well, this double integral is telling us the volume of this following region, right? So our integrand is just 1. So imagine the plane z equals 1 hovering right over our region R. And now this double integral is just going to tell us the volume of this region pictured here, right? And its height here is 1. And so the volume would be that height of 1 times the area of the base, which is just the area of our region R. And so there you go. Again, though, dimensionality-wise, uh, this would be uh, slightly off uh, because, you know, if x, y, and z all were, say, measured in inches, this volume really would have units of cubic inches, um, whereas the area really should just have units of, of square uh, inches. But nonetheless, this is a perfectly fine interpretation. Uh, so now, analogous to what we saw for our second interpretation in part A, we likewise here could now just think in terms just area itself. Just partition your region R into a bunch of these uh, little differential uh, areas, these little uh, differential rectangles with area dA. And then this notation is just saying sum those little differential areas as you range over your entire region R. Okay, And that's just going to give you the total area of the region. Okay, So, so again, this is nice because of uh, the fact that it really is a statement about area. Okay. All right, so now for the uh, third part here, this is C. Suppose that D is a disk in the xy plane with radius 4. Compute the double integral of 3 dA. All right, so let's say here's our, our disk. It has radius 4. Okay, one way to think about this is just to say, well, this 3 can come out front. 
And this double integral of just dA over our region D is just the, we said here, the area of D. So this integral is nothing other than three times the area of this disk, and that area of the disk is pi, uh, pi times four squared, so this would have a value of 48 pi. Okay. You could also take this first interpretation and think about this double integral as a volume, right? Think about the plane z equals three hovering over this disk, and then this double integral would be computing uh, this kind of a solid here. Either interpretation is fine. It turns out that this um, uh, this fact that a double integral of a constant over a certain region is just that constant times the area of the region. It's going to prove uh, to simplify a lot of calculations uh, in the future. Okay, so we'll keep this in mind, and that's going to do it for this video. Thanks.